Hungry Trilobite Podcast would like to start by acknowledging these fine conventions. SoonerCon. SoonerCon is Central Oklahoma's longest running pop culture convention. It is held in Norman, Oklahoma, and the next event is scheduled for June 24th through 26th, 2022. You can go to SoonerCon.com to sign up and get early bird pricing on admission. The Hellmouth Convention. The Hellmouth Convention is a celebration of fandoms such as Buffy, Firefly, and Dr. Horrible. It is scheduled for June 3rd through 5th, 2022 in Los Angeles, California. All proceeds raised will benefit various charities. Please go to thehellmouth.org for more information. On tap today, we have Sega Master Tim. Thank you for joining us this early morning, sir. Um... Well, it's my early morning, isn't it? It is. <laughs> You're the guest, so it's your morning. <laughs> it, well, it's not really early. It's like 10 o'clock in the morning here, but um, I still got my gym jams on. So This is yeah. your work clothes. These, this is how you focus. You <laughs> this, have the work clothes. This is my work, well, I've been working from home for a few years. Uh, it, so full disclosure, I'm, I'm also wearing uh, pajama pants with a football pattern on oh, them. Oh, very good. I, I've gone, I've gone the, um, I've gone the, um, tartan number uh-huh um, yes yes <laughs> i don't have any scottish blood in me um yes yes so man so, of, we're men of um men of culture and relaxation indeed. <laughs> and, and your culture is very spe- specific i like the slice of life you celebrate online you are uh somebody who celebrates sega properties on twitch the Sega Master System is something that you, you've touched on specifically, but you're more than that, you were a part of Sega's hotline back in the day. That's right. Yeah. And I, yeah. I almost feel like I have to explain for the younger listeners what this <laughs> is. Because before the internet, if you couldn't get far in a video game, there was a phone number you could call and mm-hmm. talk to an actual person who would tell you how to get how to do what you needed to do. Yeah, yeah that's this right. is this was a thing. And when I was a kid, this was like, dear God, this must be the best job in history. <laughs> and, and, I, and it was. Okay. It was. <laughs> you speak of it very fondly, which if I had that job, I'm not sure I'd be speaking of it fondly. So I kind of like yeah. to see where you're coming from there. Yeah. Oh, I think you only realize it in hindsight, I think. I mean, it, it, for me, it was my first job. It was the first time I moved out of home. It was the first time I really like it. I the hotline was based in Sydney, and where I lived was in um, well, they're in separate states. So we're in Victoria now, and I lived in country Victoria. So so it it was, I mean, uh, exciting and scary at the same time. Um, but yeah, it, it was. Uh, uh, Sega was a brand that I loved. Um, I, I picked up the Master System and fell in love with that because uh, they had the games in the arcades as well. Um, and I, 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 to be honest, I hadn't seen all of them, but I knew full well reading through all the magazines back in the day that they were the pinnacle. They were the best at everything. They, they um, didn't pull back when they brought out a new new arcade um so um yeah so I, I fell in love with it so yeah working for for sega was was pretty much a dream come true um as as after i finished the job i wasn't uh i, I probably didn't appreciate it um i think it, you probably wanted a break from video games and I didn't really play video games for a good uh, properly. That is a good five, 10 years after that, you know? Um, But uh, what, what little time I have as a fully grown adult these days. um, Yeah. I do enjoy sitting down, having a game either through an emulator or through my arcade cab on off to the, the right of me so um yeah i get as much gaming as i can but um no uh it it was it was pretty much the best job and i and i wish i i wish i savored it even more my my fellow work colleagues the other sega masters 
um, they often wish that they held on to more things from those days because now here we are and, you know, it's a good 30 odd years after the whole thing. And uh, we sort of sit back and, and we see this, this fandom about Sega. There's a strong nostalgia because they don't make arcades anymore. And everybody looks back and thinks, oh, that, you know, those were the great days and that, especially during the console wars. Um, and we, we didn't realize back then, but we were just so lucky, so lucky to be in the middle of it all, not as somebody who was making games or working in accounts or anything like that. We were game, we were gamers just like everyone else, but we, as you say, we were getting paid to play the games. Um, yeah. So it was awesome. <laughs> It, it does sound like it would have been. And from my perspective as an American, at that point in time, everything was Nintendo based. It, it was kind yeah. of a flip that in Australia, the Sega, they had the connections to be much, much bigger than they were in the US at that point in time. So to, to be a Sega person in the in Australia was not was it wasn't like you were the two kids in the school that had it. No, you were in with the mainstream. You were in with the yeah. gamer culture of the era. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because, I mean, Nintendo, yeah, it was big in North America and, and Japan, but everywhere else in the world, it was it was Sega. Um, and there's just no two ways about it. Um, Nintendo really wasn't getting a foothold into Australia. I think, I think one of the main reasons for that could have been um like here in australia back in those days it, it did take time for things to be brought over here and yet we always wanted the newest and the best and that but as soon as we saw the Sega and we compared that to the nintendo you just have to look at it you just have to look at the games and see how much fresher they are they've got a bit of color palette um, the sound chip was better. Everything was better on the Sega uh, spec-wise, okay? Now, that's not to say the games were a lot better. <laughs> I agree with that, you know. Um, Mario Brothers is, you know, the, the pinnacle, we can say. Um, but, yeah, you just look at it and go, oh, geez, that's so fresh. And I think also the marketing campaign, uh, when the Mega Drive came out, more directed at teenagers as well. Um, yeah, so so we we appreciated all the fresh new things, and we wanted the best over here. And, um, and we looked at Nintendo. We go, that's crap. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's, I, I think that was pretty much the ethos. But over the years, that obviously changed when the mm -hmm. SNES came out. Yeah, it, it, it's it's funny. Over the years, it's it's easy to look back at it now when we can pick Oops. up these things. Okay. Sorry about the dog who's barking. Oh. That's Millie. The, the followers know of Millie. She's having delusions of grandeur again. She's probably barking at a bird or a leaf. Uh, a little Sorry later, you may hear Polina at the door scratching to get in. Oh, I may yeah. have to, okay. yes. Okay. So she might be wanting to say hi to Millie, and that's perfectly fine. Okay, that could, that could be why. <laughs> Sorry about that. But we can, we can get to the point where we can buy these things cheaply and we can compare ROMs and play the games easily. Yeah. But when you could only buy one system, you got so invested in which one was best and which one mm. was the one that should win. We had this idea that a console should win. Do yes. people do that anymore? Um, I do see it. I do see it in Twitter, Twitterverse. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I mean, to be honest, like I, I was you know, in the console wall. And, um, and you know, we always thought that Nintendo was shite and, 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 and I admit to it. Um, but I think as you grow up, you become a, a lot more, um, you know, uh, uh, more attuned. You do appreciate more games and that. So, um, but yeah, even today, th this whole thing about, about uh, Xbox and PlayStation fans. You know, I see people having a rant on on 
bloody Twitter, and I can't say that Twitter is <laughs> generally a friendly place to be, but they're dissing, they're dissing people that, that enjoy their Xbox. Oh, we're better than that. And, and I'm thinking, and, but, but the big difference is, is that these are fully grown adults. Yes. <laughs> is, that's yes. the difference. The younger kids, they're, they're grateful for small mercies. They're happy with anything. It, it's mainly the adults that are carrying on like children now. So um, that's concerning. That mm-hmm. is concerning. And I, I think, look, I just hope for these, for these, and they're generally men, they generally are men. Um, I hope that when they grow up, they look back and, and think what a bloody idiot they were. You know, <laughs> so, um, but I, I just don't, I don't understand the logic of it. I mean, like I'm, I'm, I'm turning 50 this year. I, I was born in the year that video games were invented all right that's not to say i was playing video games from an embryo that's, that's no. not the case but i've appreciated as to where video gaming has evolved from from a game of pong to now these massive open worlds um and i'm just so grateful for where it is today I am just so grateful for it. And um, um, and I'm, as I said before, I'm just so grateful to have been in the middle of, um, of gaming history. Um, not really li- realizing that until about 25 years later, but- um, That's yeah, how history just, works. Yeah, that, yeah, I know. Um, so yeah, I just, I'm just so thankful for it. And I hope people, when they grow up, you know, like these fools, uh, do you realize? Do you realize appreciation? It's it's so rare that that, that in a, a, when you're making history that you actually are cognizant of it at the time. It it happens, but it's it's a once or twice in a lifetime situation. Yeah, yeah. But looking back, do you have an experience that was particularly valuable about being in the middle of the console wars? Um. A- a, a valuable experience geez that's not necessarily question. valuable in a good way but <laughs> i'll give that as an option um a valuable experience i'm trying to think of one um i, w- I would I, w- I think it was just being on the phones because like when i grew up when i grew up um as a kid in a small town, we had a, had a population of three and a half thousand people. And um, uh, like, I think I was the only real console gamer because a lot of, a lot of kids that were playing video games were mainly playing the Commodore. Okay. The 2600, or they might, might've been playing the Amiga or a C128. Um, I was different. I like consoles. I loved Sega. So I think the the great joy about it was when I started taking those first calls and when you started hearing kids saying how much they love Sega, like fans, real fans. And I'm like, (laughs) you know, that scene in The Simpsons when Milhouse sees his twin from from the other town Mm -hmm. (laughs) and he goes (laughs) Is this what they mean when doves cry? Yeah, but you, you sort of sit there. I mean, the, the, the first impact, like, like just walking in and, and being surrounded by Sega merchandise, surrounded by people that are working for Sega and, and they have a love for it as well um you know that that was the first rush but i think the main rush was just young kids um and parents ringing up and and telling us how much they love love the sega brand um yeah so so that 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 was a a valuable thing for me um I, i learned so much in such a short time um more than just just working and working for sega but just living from home for the first time living in a city i never lived in before i've never 
probably visited it once a few years before. So um, it just the whole thing was just just the big thing for me. It really was. You know, and I was only about 1920 back then. So yeah. You're echoing a lot of things I had on an earlier episode with Stefan Reese from Art of Nintendo Power. Oh, yes, um, yes. Um, he was saying that a lot of times kids, especially the, the kids who are just hitting those teen years who were in small towns that didn't have a lot of other game players would call yeah. because there was a chance to talk to somebody who shared an interest. Yes. They did, didn't even want to talk about, have a question. They just wanted to talk to somebody. Yes, yes, yes. You almost end up being a counselor, like video game, the video game counselor, but more on the psychological sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> tell, tell me what's on your mind. I really love Seeker. <laughs> you know, so, so um, yeah, yeah. It's it, um, and I, I, and I think you you still see that emanate today. Um, the the gaming community is all larger but it's so better interconnected it is so better in connect, interconnected uh all thanks to social media and doing things like this you know so um sharing passions um is is real been such a such a, a valuable tool for people I, I mean yeah i do have a lot of of um followers on twitter and um, you can see that you, you can just get a sense um, that, you know, video gaming is everything to them because they don't have uh, much else going in life, but at least it's something for them and mm -hmm. they want to share their experiences. They want to join in with the conversations and have a common topic. And this is the idea is that, we don't want people to feel lonely. Nobody wants to feel lonely. So, um, you know, I, I, I greet people with open arms uh, if, if they want to join in with the retro gaming community or the gaming community as as a whole. Um, as, as long as you don't act, um, act like a dickhead, quite frankly. That's the important thing because, okay, you want to talk about gaming, that's great, but you've got to also be respectful of other people's views as well. Everything's an opinion, you know? Yeah. It doesn't mean that they're a bad person. It's, it's just mainly an opinion. But when they start saying nasty things, that's I, I don't want to get involved with that sort of stuff. I'm not, I'm not a good person to argue with. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate it. It's not, it's not good for the soul. It is not. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I just said to somebody before I logged in uh, mm. that I'm, if somebody wants to have a sincere disagreement of the artistry of what they're talking about, be it a TV show, mm. book, a game, it, I'm here for that. If you yes. think my favorite thing in the world is absolute garbage, sit down, let's, let's have some coffee and talk about why. I'm good yeah. with that, really. Yeah. But when you have to attack the people who disagree or even the people who yeah. made that thing, that's yeah. just, that's the point at which it's like we're, we're not having a chat anymore we're not even wanting to be in the same room yeah and, and that's that's toxic and that's that's just illogical it, it really is it's it, it's illogical and it's especially like um uh lbg uh qi i think i've got all the letters i'm sorry if i may have offended anyone um you know uh, i i see people having to go go at them you know oh you can't be a gamer because you know, you have a, a um, uh, you, you, you're not heterosexual. I mean, what sort of rubbish is, is that? That makes you know? no sense. Like, yeah, and, and girls can't be gamers. Rubbish. I mean, <sighs> I I just don't, I don't understand and I won't tolerate that bullshit and I won't tolerate racism either. Um, it's, it's, it's just, it just doesn't. I mean, we're in the bloody 21st century, but that's the sort of stuff that your grandparents used to talk about, you know? It's, <laughs> it's, it's crazy because you're talking about, um, you know, moving to your first place. When I moved to my first place, a lot of my immediate gaming circle were gay. Yeah. It wasn't okay. like it, it wasn't something that came up yeah. a lot, but it's like, it just, they just were. And the person who introduced me to my first video game was a girl. 
So to say, Good. girls, it's like it didn't make any sense to me. I never understood where this was coming from. Okay. Can but you... yeah, and we talk about the people who have nothing else in their life but gaming. And mm. I want to defend them for a minute because. Yes. Um, when I'm at conventions or I'm, I'm on, in the communities online, I see people mm. like that. And it's not always their decision to not have something else in their life. I know a lot of people who have health issues, yes. either mental or physical, and that yes. prevents them from putting themselves out in the world. And yeah. the game is right there. Yeah. They have that. It's, it's something they can do to keep their mind sharp, keep their reflexes sharp. It's, it's good for them mm. in a bad situation. Yes. And, and that's, right. that should be celebrated. Yeah, that's right. And, and that, that was the same with me. Like um, a lot of my gaming, first of all, became a keen interest. And then that helped me a lot through my years being in hospital a lot through my teens. Um, and so I, I, I didn't have that constant connection with people at school or high school, you know. Um, so my connection with gaming grew and grew. And I think, you know, sometimes I find that that the video gaming, video gaming helped me problem solve better. I mean, when you really come down to the crux of it, when you play games, any form of game, it's basically trying to solve a problem. So and sometimes I think that helped me get through year 11 I passed the exams with only three weeks of schooling. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that might have been the case. You know, some people were very, um, what would we say, um, very bitter <laughs> and angry that I did. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I think I think that was basically the case. It, it was just a case of problem solving through video games. I've sort of looked at things in a logical ways and just answered the questions with what I thought was right. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, th I, th I think it helps everyone. Gaming. I would think so. And I mean, really, it, it comes down to you, you have a controller, which has a finite yes. number of ways to input yeah. information, hmm. whether it's a one button controller or a 10 button. There's only yeah. so many combinations you can give us. So you just have to figure out what at what point you give it that information. That's and right. there's a lot of steps in between those two, but it's it's not like you can just write your own story. There's there's an input and an output. At least that's how the computer part of me thinks. That's right. That's right. And a lot of people are going through this with Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> They're finding how bloody difficult it is. And look, the, the funny thing is, I I still like I play these these old games today, and I still get. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah th there's always a solution to any problem um the most important thing though i always say with problem solving is that you don't cheat you don't cheat and and i know it's that uh, i've always said this it sounds rather ironic that for a bloke who had all the cheats all the walkthroughs and everything I never use them when I play the game myself because I am not going to learn anything if I'm going to cheat. Why, why do I want to just skip to level eight without even trying? You've got to understand how to get there. So, and, and then at the end, if you complete a game all by yourself without any cheats of that, um, the reward is so much better. And, you know, you see those old, you know, those old, uh, sometimes there's, um, old videotapes of um, parents recording their their kid beating Mario Brothers or whatever a game it is, and then you see the excitement by the kid. You know, I can't remember which video it was, but um, yeah, the kid was getting the Pol Polaroid by the CRT. <laughs> you know, so excited to beat the game, and that's reward, that's elation, not cheat codes, not cheat codes. Wait, mind help, yeah. <laughs> So how do you define a cheat? What's cheating and what's legit to you? Uh, what's legit to me? You sit there for a long time and you keep on dying. <laughs> you keep on trying. You keep on trying. You don't get any help from anyone and you just work out the problem yourself. That, that is basically it. No extra lives, no game genies. 
no little hacks you work it out for yourself and if you don't work it out for yourself well that's fine it's not the end of the world okay if you're not good at a game you're not good at a game i know there's certain games that i can't i can't play well i some for some strange reason i can't work out maze games you know like pac-man mm -hmm. <laughs> i just, just can't, i can't work it out i really can't I, I get myself all cornered up and then all all the ghosts come along there's some games i completely suck at but some games i'm good at and that's the thing you can't be the best at everything and yes there's few rare people on this planet that are really good you know and hats off to them but there are there are a lot of people that can't be the best at everything you know um so yeah just, just working working things out yourself no cheat codes no little hacks no little you know auto auto aims <laughs> you know how did he shoot me around the corner <laughs> so, yeah just work it out there's there's no shame in being bad at a game really you, you just acknowledge i'm no good we can't be perfect at everything god god <laughs> i've been advocating making games what i'm saying is accessible and to you know if you if you want the auto aim it's there if you want the level yeah. skip it's there but then mm -hmm. I, I say to the people add let's normalize being honest about how you got to the end of the game if you got there at all yeah did you sit there and, and brute force it and get good or did you yeah. say well i put it on easy and i rolled through it that's okay just tell the truth yeah yeah but nobody wants to tell the truth no <laughs> it's there because social media you know, people put up a persona on the screen and then so you know oh, I'm, I'm great i'm i'm doing this and meanwhile in the background their life is completely screwed you know um, <laughs> uh, yeah there's an old saying um it's funny how people that put up motivational quotes about how to live your life their lives are completely screwed themselves. And there's one person on Facebook I know that keeps on putting them up. And I know personally, her life is not as all what it, what it mm -hmm. seems. So um, sometimes some people need to take their own advice. But um, anyway, but yeah, I, I think it's just you know, wanting to have a persona um, in the, uh, on the internet, social media, um i don't know it's 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 a choice if i want to do it but um i i, I just i just don't think you can live with, i i personally myself i couldn't live with myself um after i i uh stop like say if i'd stop this conversation and then i and then i'd go off and and be just a grumpy old shit you know or a horrible mm. person I, I i'm not good at acting mm. <laughs> Let's just say that. I'm, I'm no good at acting and i don't think uh, i'd rather see when when people see me on the screen and that they're going to get the same person um in in face-to-face uh, -face situations so um yeah yeah i i, I just don't if, if you haven't got a personality well, that's okay at least you, you, you're yourself, aren't you? you know? And so. I, that's something I think we're starting very slowly to understand on social media and on the internet, mm. that there's a value in being genuine. That yeah. people, We've gotten tired of stage personas and people who are just mm. different people as soon as the camera goes off. We, we, we see enough of that. Yeah. Like um, to take it back to video games for a minute, like I am uh, just not to brag, just to, to make it up a point. Yeah. I'm pretty good at Super Mario Brothers too. Okay. <laughs> I've been playing it since I was eight years old. I'm yeah. almost 41. Yeah, yeah, I've gotten good. I suck at bell toads, like many people do. <laughs> I'm okay saying both. I, I have I have no part of my ego wrapped up in being good at battle toads. Yeah. Or exactly. many other games I could list. It doesn't <laughs> if you see me suck at battle toads, I don't feel bad. I don't feel the need to put that part of myself. <laughs> Up in front of the world and saying, I'm the grand champion of Battletoads. Exactly. Exactly. It's not like it's a, a scar, a scar or or a hex on you if you apply for a job. You know, you know that guy doesn't doesn't know how to play Battletoads. He sucks <laughs> it. Oh well, 
well, look, it's <laughs> let's just not reply. It's not even worth firing him. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who fucking cares? They exactly. really don't care. Who cares? And um, I, I find it. I find it. Uh, because I, I I only got onto Twitch, um, just over a year ago, and I'm I keep on saying I'm still trying to work out the bloody thing. I I got, I got no idea how everything works, let alone like somebody subs, and I always say I'm so sorry. I've got so little to deliver. Uh, but the, the thing is, is that the the first thing that they say is be yourself, and then half of the people that you see on Twitch. And not themselves, you know they can't. I mean, you can't have that much energy all the time. You can't have that much energy all the time, you know. Um, so that that's why I don't invest much time on Twitch because, well, one, I don't have enough time anyway to start things off. Um, and secondly, it just, I think it, it would just be... It, it, it would be just an inconvenience in life for me. It really would. Like, I make enough money in the job that I'm doing. I, I don't need Twitch. I really don't. But I like, I like when I've got the time to maybe share my experiences and that that I've gone through. And that, that's about it. You know, I don't see it as... I need, I need all these people to watch me. I really, I, I don't have a desire for it because I think the more follow, followers you get, I think, it, 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 I think it can change you. I'm sure it has, it has with a lot of people and they're always having to think of new ideas to keep on getting more followers, to keep on being more interesting. Um, that's i'm sorry but that's that's not a life i want to really live <laughs> i just i'm happy with my wife and my sausage dog <laughs> and my house you know i don't need anything else in to worry about in life you know um i've got enough problems <laughs> as it is. well normally i'd be asking if you had any greater ambitions for your channel but if you're happy being where you are i commend I, you for that I, yeah yeah i don't I don't really have a desire. I mean, I, I reached out to one of my um, fellow um, Sega masters, Brian, you might know him as in spaces. And I asked him, you know, okay, so how's it work? And, and that, and I said, oh yeah, yeah, you do this and you do that. And eventually after about six months, I got it up and running. I worked it out. I don't know how the hell, I even got a, a, a mate of mine, um Callum to come around to sort of set it up and um and, and I thank him for setting it up but when I left I, I was a little bit dazed and confused <laughs> when he left so but, but I thank Callum for for setting it up and, and getting the groundwork up but um I just I, I really don't um I think over these these past few years especially after my original twitter account got suspended for some unknown reason um i just thought that you know you you, you put things into perspective and go oh, look is it is this really important because i i want to be able to do, to enjoy the other things in life and i and the most important thing I have in, in my life is my wife. Okay. And I don't want to ignore her. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I don't want to take her, take her away from her hobbies. So I more look at this as, as a hobby more than anything. Um, but um, I, I always say that I've got an interesting past, uh, very, which is very unique. It is. And, um, and I'm very, I'm very, very grateful for it. Um, but, um, I can't, I, I, I think, I think it helps me. It helps me. And I, I'm sure it, it would help you too. If you have other interests other than gaming, it, it helps you ground yourself, you know, because there are other important things in life, like friends, family, food, as mm -hmm. I'm always putting food. <laughs> um, and, 
other other things you know so um you know life life is very interesting out there and like um, very important um, um games are very important but also other things are very important so you gotta you gotta really balance it up you gotta if you if you think i often think if something's making you frustrated then probably pull back from it and it's not something that's so apparent at first and you you learn this o- over time but you if you find something is frustrating you ask yourself what it could be um it, or even health wise health wise i i learned i'll we'll tell you another story i learned that lesson many years ago i um i used to play a lot of poker when it was all really big in that and I used to be playing six, sometimes seven nights a week. All right. And the idea, and it wasn't costing me money for the record um, in, in terms of entry fees. There's no sort of entry fee. It was pub poker. And depending where you're placed, you got points for where you ended up. But I was, I was playing it just about every night. Got really good at it. And then one day at work, um i felt oh geez uh somebody said somebody said um oh tim you, you've dropped your page your bit of paper you're holding and i didn't even notice it I was like, oh right thanks thanks and um later on i was um, marking some work because i'm i'm a vocational trainer i i uh, i'm like a teacher to say Okay, so anyway i'm marking work and then i looked a little bit further down and there was a puddle of drool on the paperwork i'm thinking that's really odd anyway my wife comes around to pick me up and we were going to go out to play a poker tournament i said i just don't feel right i feel really tired down one side of my body you know down my arm a bit so i sent myself to hospital i went to triage and and the girl there says um look at me and tell me your name and where you live and gave them my address and uh, they go, right, you're straight in. I'm like, okay, what's going on? And um, within minutes, a neurologist was there. She did a few tests and she said, you've had a stroke. Mm-hmm. Sounds like it. Yeah. And what I realized was that, I would, that the incentive is, is that when you go to play at this pub poker, what they give you, give you is a card. And when you fill out, the, you've got four stamps and each stamp represents um a drink of alcohol so seven nights a week six seven nights a week four beers a day do the maths mm-hmm. and no wonder i ended up with a bloody stroke so that night let's see no more poker i played um a state final and that was my last game and i hadn't played any pub poker since and, that, and, and and I'm so much better for it. Mm-hmm. So this is the same thing with with gaming. You've got to you've got to get a balance because if you're stuck getting frustrated about certain things, ask yourself if that thing is causing you the frustration, then maybe pull back a bit or just get out of it because it's it's not worth your energy. It really isn't. So yeah, so bit of advice. <laughs> Okay. From an almost 50 year old, I, I can start giving advice now. <laughs> so gaming was a big enough part of your life that you got your start in the world doing that. You stayed yeah. with it ever since you have a Twitch yeah. channel and yet you're standing here saying, let there be other things in life too. have a balance. Yes, you do. You do. I, I, I can't um, think of a better place to leave it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it, mate. <laughs> yes. The best way. So Tim, where can I send people uh, for anybody that would want to get more of your, your life wisdom and your gaming skills, where can I send them? Okay. Well, most of my work is done on Twitter. Um, that that's because it's convenient to do scheduling, <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's, um, but I, I do most of my stuff on Twitter, Twitter. So it's, um, Seagar SM Tim. Um, I don't know, you might put something up. Um, so Sega SM Tim, or find me on Twitch, which is Sega Master Tim. 
um, that- you'll find me there. And and it, and as I said, with Twitch, I'm not regularly on there. I don't have a schedule. I don't have emotes. <laughs> it's just I just have me playing games and talking crap. That's about it. <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> I'm going to put all that information on the show notes on my website, aaronbosick.com. So hopefully anybody wants to check in on you can do that. Yep. Tim, I want to thank you so much for being here. I've had a blast. I would love to have you back on any time because you and I are definitely on the same <laughs> wavelength when it comes to a gaming life balance. Ooh, we've got the same here too, come to think of it. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, mate. Thank you for having me on. And um, it's been a pleasure. Likewise. Okay, bye.